Welcome, welcome, welcome. We are gonna cut, sew and cut a steak today on the Anna cardigan. I haven't taken pictures or shown you guys what it looks like now that it's almost ready to cut. So this is the sweater that we're gonna steak today. Beads and color work and more beads. Anyway, um, we're gonna sew a steak on the sewing machine. This is my featherweight. What you didn't see us doing earlier is, this is my beautiful featherweight that mom got me. Thank you for the tour, mom. Mom is manning the camera, so if you have questions, I believe you can ask them on here. Hello. This is our first Facebook Live video, so yeah. Um, this is the book I have for my sewing machine. Abby from Knit Knit Cafe gave this to me. It has the manual and where to oil and how to thread it and all that in the back and then like some history stuff in the front. But it's super useful because you always want to read your manual. And we made sure to oil it, oil the featherweight and check the thread tension before we started uh, recording so that you don't watch me do that boring business for 20 minutes to an hour depending on what we're doing. So we're going to start by sewing a practice steak on the swatch. This is the swatch I did for the Anna Cardigan. I know it is a large swatch but you always want to sew on your sewing machine on a swatch first that is representative of your final fabric that's why it's a good idea not to rip out your it's one of like a thousand ideas why you shouldn't rip out your swatches but this is a really good one particularly so you'll notice that it's still in the round I'm not going to secure this with the sewing machine before I cut it because I want you to see how well your knitting will hold up before you sew it now I wouldn't recommend cutting a steak and then leaving it in your bag languishing if you're not going to sew it first, just a thought. You cut it when you're ready to, to do the steak. I'm also going to include links to all the stuff I talk about in the project page for the Anna cardigan because you might want to, if you have the machine, you might want to get the book, you might want to get the scissors, you know, whatever. So this is my swatch and let's do a snip. These are Dovo embroidery scissors. They're made in Germany. We got to try them at TNA and mom, liked, mom and I both liked them so much we got a set. So snip, 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 nice and sharp. Snip, snip, snip. Snip. All right, nothing ran away. If I pull on them, the ends will, will fray a bit, but it'll mostly stay put. So, okay, we're gonna sew a little bit to make sure that the sewing machine is gonna be happy. I'm gonna go lengthwise because I've got more fabric that way to work with. I'm gonna go hot dog, then hamburger. Okay. And we're gonna rock and roll. I have a walking foot on my sewing machine. This is specific to my, this specific sewing machine, the featherweight. If you have a sewing machine and you want to see if it has a walking foot so you can steak your knits, that's usually pretty. Also, before you start sewing, let's have a look at the throat plate. Here's the throat plate. It's right here. If you take a look inside, it's got a skinny little hole. If you go down this way, we had to do it last time. There we go. Um, can see you, it right here? Can I'm going to poke, poke with my scissors. See right there? Right there. So that's round. It's not an oval orifice. So this only does forwards and backwards, and that is it. And it is a nice serviceable machine. Mom got it for me for Christmas a few years ago. And if things go wrong, it's live. And But things were fine last time, so we'll rock and roll. I'm bringing down the presser foot. The walking foot makes it so that your fabric feeds evenly and doesn't ruffle. If you look at what thread am I using today, I'm using dual duty all purpose. Uh, generally speaking, I tend to like to use Guterman or Mettler? Is that what the M one is called? Yes, something like that. But really, I just stole thread from mom's house that matched my fabric. So, that doesn't really help you, but it is very convenient for me. All right, let's go. Let's make sure that doesn't get stuck under that pressure foot. And we are a little bit stuck. There's a little thing on this that occasionally will catch up on a hitch, so I gotta feed it really evenly. There we go. There we go. There we go. All right. We are, as they say, cooking with gas. So I'm gonna go this way, hamburger, and then we're gonna sew the real sweater. Hooray. Oh, except we are caught a little bit. Uh, we have Pull somebody that up. saying she'll never steak. Eh. And maybe you'll change your mind. It's really fun and convenient, and I like it. It's one of my favorite tricks. All right, here we go. I know that was a lot of swatch to, to steak. 
Here we go. All right, looks good. Sewing on the front, yeah, sewing on the back. Sure, it's really hard to see because it's a dark color, or it's not a dark color, but there's the sewing. It's not, it's not a straight line. Doesn't have to be on the swatch, but does have to be on the sweater. So here is my sweater. Thing of beauty, thing of wonder. I'm gonna trim these long tails so they don't get caught up while I'm sewing. Excellent snip. plan. Snip. 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 All right, and now I'm gonna turn this guy inside out. This guy, this girl inside out, this cardigan inside out. This cardigan to be. You'll notice that they, the steak stitches are standing up very politely on the inside because I purled them on the right side. Oh, I'm jumping around, sorry. I'm trying to turn it inside out, which does not lend itself well to cinematography, I know. Let me trim these tails too. Whoop. By the way, I'm gonna take a moment to brag on how gorgeous these floats turned out. Whee! The floats are lovely. All right, so. And we can see the beads on the inside too. Yep. Excellent. All right, so now I'm gonna sew this. I'm gonna do two rows of machine stitching. Can you show us where you're going to stitch? I am, I'm gonna take this needle and use it as a pointer, because I am pretty fancy. All right, so while I'm getting this set up, I am going to sew along the ditch. I'm gonna sew right in the middle there of that side. I'm gonna do two rows of machine stitching right in the middle there and two rows of machine stitching right along there. And then we're gonna cut. So it's gonna be really exciting. I'm gonna cut you had right. You stitches on nope. the, on the other Nope, this is exactly the you... same. Three stitches. Three stitches is my favorite number. Okay, look wider. Because the yarn is bigger. Okay. Um, I'm gonna cut down the center row of stitching. So, I'm gonna sew, and if you have questions, you can ask, and yeah. So I always keep my hand in the middle, or at least I check on it so that I don't accidentally sew. In the middle of what? One side of my sweater to the other, in the middle of the sweater. So I'm gonna put my hand through the neck hole in a minute. So I'm gonna move these out of the way so I can see. I'm gonna get this set up right there. I also wanna make sure that this is up. Um, we have a, a listener who's never knit a sweater before. Okay. Um, there, there are lots of easy sure. manageable sweaters. Of course. So I'm gonna go, there we go. This is a slow process, so hunker down. Um, would you sew a steak with a serger? No, I would never serge a steak. So a serger sews and cuts at the same time? Yes, that is why I, I have messed up commercial fabric on a serger that I was not as emotionally attached to as my knits. There we go. And it's going right down the center of the V's. The V's. Can that you just see a or bit. do I need? There we go. Let's scoot it up a little bit. Those sweaters actually quite heavy. So I'm having to scoot it up a little bit with my forearms so that it's on the table. Um, you want bit. to put your sweater on the table so it doesn't pull the weight of the sweater no. doesn't pull down yep it's just a little awkward because it's not a very big sweater do you want to move your machine back a bit mm, that's probably not no i want most of it okay. on the table i think we're good okay also i didn't move it from last time this sweater just weighs more there we, we are moving making sure I'm um, only sewing. The sewing machine has a lovely old-timey sound. It also smells really good. Metal and what? Oil. Metal and oil. Okay. There we go. And you're sticking, you're sticking your hand I'm in? I'm checking it periodically to make sure that the front and the back are still separate. <laughs> I'm not going to say that's happened to me, but it was really close one time. Um, happened to me. Did it happen to you? Not on a special. Yeah. I 
also nearly did that when I was cutting a steak one time. Mm -hmm. But I have a trick for that, which I'm going to show everybody. And I hope you will appreciate the humor of it. Otherwise, you know, that's cool. It's yet another knitting question. Well, no. The humor of my solution, actually. All right, there we go. I'm also trying not to sew dog hair into this steak because there are little bits of Nikki's fur because he kept stealing this. All right, so let's make sure that's not there. I hope this isn't giving anyone fits because I'm stopping and starting, but that's just how we're trying to roll. If this was a fancy newer machine, I would have it on a slow stitch instead of stopping and starting, but it's not. Um, you can't control the speed with the, with the You know what, let me take my shoes off. That's probably going to give me more. Um, there we I go. I think everybody is nervous about steaks. I am not initially. nervous about steaks. How I wasn't. How many steaks have you sewn? Me? Yes. Sewn? How many sweaters have you steeped? I don't know, like maybe five or ten. That's a big difference, I know. Yeah, but, well. But I did my first one in college, my first year of college. Did you? You did the sewing, I did the cutting. But I read, pardon me while I reach for my scissors, they were not in the optimal place. This is why we don't do a video cast. Um, but you did the sewing, and I read the Philosopher's Guide to... No, the Philosopher's Wool Fair Isle Sweater Simplified book, which is my favorite one. And it's the one I recommend on the podcast, like, all the time because it's great. And I'm going to cut this tail because I don't need it. Boom. Um, and they talked about it in the book. And I was basically psyching myself up the whole time to cut it. So by the time I finally got there, I was so excited that I was like, let's do this. So... So I wasn't nervous my first time. And afterwards, I felt like that crazy adrenaline rush of like, oh my gosh, I just did something super crazy. But it was a steak. All right, let's go. Um, I'm doing the second side. So I just sewed up one side. I'm going to sew down the other. And then we're going to wing around and do it all again. And then we're going to cut. Do you need to wing it around or could you cut the thread and do it again? Oh, I could cut it and do it again, but I was already there. sure that's not folded if I also Genevieve is in the bedroom watching TV with Andrew so she's not gonna get to watch me cut this sweater for lots of good reasons I don't recommend steaking in front of your children because it will give them ideas or make them cry because you're cutting their beautiful sweater um, you helped with an outfit I was sewing you when you were you were really little you didn't even talk really at the time mm. It's a good idea to keep your scissors and your stuff away from your kids. Just, yeah, just a PSA. I never to leave my machine plugged in and the scissors lying next to me if I were not sitting right there. Okay, here we go. Here we go. Okay. I would have some music going. But I'm afraid it would be distracting. All right, now we're going to wing around and do it again. Second verse, same as the first. More steaking. Or more sewing. And then we're going to cut, and I'll pick up some stitches to show you how what I do after I cut the steak, because that was an interesting question we got, I think, in the Ravelry forum. Do you have to do two rows of stitching? You don't have to. I emotionally need to. But it'll stay put just fine with just one. So this is a security blanket, the second row of stitching? I like to think of it as um, a safety net. Okay. Because the stitches on my sewing machine are much smaller than my knitting stitches. So there's going to be, they're going to be, they bite into the stitches very nicely. Do you have a question about thread? Yeah. Do you use special or I use a thread that matches in color. I don't use like polyester quilting thread, but I use basically whatever my mom has in the house. <laughs> um, so 
regular old, this is all purpose thread. Dual duty? Yep. All right. It's, it's what they sell, sell at the big box store. Yep. I try to get good stuff, so I never buy the stuff that's like three, four dollars. Well, you want it to hold up and not freak your machine out. Exactly. Um, I really like the Gooderman and Mettler threads, which is what Abby told me I had to use with my Bernina that I got from her. And I've noticed I have a lot less problem with thread consistency and, and that with, with those threads. But again, I'm using this because it matches in color and we had it, so. I uh, buy a lot of Coates and Clark. Mm -hmm. And for the sewing I do, I like that. We're in the black section, and even though I'm wearing my reading glasses, this is murder on the eyes. I don't, I don't have as much light, light as I would like. Nope. And I'm guessing not as much light, light as you would like either. Nope. All right, and we're going to come back down the other way, and then we're going to cut. Woohoo! <coughs> Excuse me. I really admire people who are comfortable doing live stuff. I am not one of you. And we are using a walking foot. Mm-hmm. Okay. And a walking foot moves both the, helps with moving both the upper and the lower layer of fabric. Uh, with a regular foot, you have the feed dogs underneath. Mm-hmm. And they, you have more pull from the lower on the lower layer. Of fabric than on the top. And it can cause ruffling. If you look at the picture of Genevieve's Elsa sweater uh, on that project page, there's a picture of her wearing it after I cut it open, after I steeped it, and I sewed that with the regular presser foot that comes with my machine. And you can see the ruffling. It didn't make any difference on the finished product, but I like this better because it doesn't ruffle. And that just feels, feels better. There's like a million good reasons, but I just like it better. And really, isn't that the most important reason? Okay, let go, please. There we are. Boop, boop, boop. <laughs> done. That part's done. All right, so now I'm going to pull my needle up. Oops. Uh, release the presser foot. Thank you. Excellent. That was the thing I forgot to do. And I can't, will you remind me to fix that before I put it away? I can't, you can't fold it back up in the box with the walking foot on, so. Oh. Which is kind of a bummer, but all fine. Okay, so the next thing we are going to do is cut and This is the, the walking foot? Yep. One of our, our viewers ask about it. All right, so now I'm going to, remember how I said I had a trick for not cutting your sweater? Doesn't have to be a frozen look and find book. Oh, we're, we like to do the thematic. Also, it was on the table. We've gotten a lot of play out of it though, so if you're looking for a good look and find book and your child's a frozen enthusiast, there's a great one. All right, can you? All right, there we go. Okay, and let's cut. We have the dog underfoot. Yep. Because he likes to be where we are. He's a good dog. He is a good dog. All right, so we are going to, I have pointy scissors. We're going to slice down the center row of stitches. Um, just like that. Snip, 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 Done. Ready? Is everyone ready? Take a big deep breath. We're gonna go. Oh, the reason I put the book in the middle is so I don't accidentally cut both layers. Both layers. I almost did that once. Never again. A hardback book, piece of cardboard, doesn't really matter, just something in the middle. Okay, so. We are here, we are here. I like using embroidery scissors to cut my steaks, not because it is easier or faster, but because actually it's only a few stitches at a time that you're cutting. And I already have them in my knitting bag and I don't have to go dig up my shears. Keep cutting. I know, I'm taking a second between bites. Well, um, Carol asked me to bring the camera in closer. Okay. And so I do. 
we make a great team. All right, hang on, let me scoot this closer because I'm not going to be cutting across the table. Okay. <sighs> mm, I don't know if I would want to cut it, cut it on the ironing board. Your ironing board has a fabric cover. Yes. You always block your knitting before you sew your steaks, by the way. In case you were wondering. I don't think we've talked about that in this one. Oh, Lindsay joined us. Wonderful. All right, let's give these threads a trim just to tidy it up. And I'm going to trim this. So, you're steaked. We're sewn. And somebody on the Ravelry group asked me, I'm going to put these back in the thingy. All right, do you want me to yank on it so you can see how it holds together? Do that. Okay. Hot dog, hamburger. Nothing's falling apart. That's the color work. Should I do it on the other side just for, just for giggles? Hot dog, hamburger, it's all staying put. All right, so let me get the yarn. Okay, maybe you should give our um frightened viewers a chance to go and get some wine or something to fortify their nerves after watching you yank on the cut knitting. I would love to do that, except I don't know if my children are going to melt. I didn't. I didn't no, I meant I would you. love to give them the time to do that. They can, they can do that when we're done, because the kids might melt before we're done. And that is the joy of live. Okay, so this is the sweater. Let me turn it right side out. I forgot to graft the arms. Whoops. The underarms. Doesn't matter. Doesn't have to do it now. Don't have to do it before. I just noticed. It's not like I would have handed it to Genevieve with the armholes open. All right. Let's pull these sleeves to the outside so you can admire the beauty that is Genevieve's Anna sweater, like I do every time I look at it. I'm so pleased with how this turned out. By the way, could I just mention that? Like for the millionth time. It's beautiful. I'm so pleased. Okay, so I have black yarn, which of course is the, you know what? Since I'm not really doing it right now, let's use light blue. I'm fake picking up the facing for you guys because someone asked. It's called a demo. It's a demo. What it's is not the actually pattern, be... lovey? This is, um, it's, it's Child's Yoked Sweater by Ann Budd from the Handy Book of Sweaters, modified with a chart from Ann Podlasak. This chart is a modified chart from Magnificent, and she also did the bead chart. It's her concept, which I, of course, changed because I can't leave anything alone. And I have all the details on how you can do these in the project page. What is the name of this project? The Anna Cardigan. And you're a cute knitter? I am cute knitter on the Ravelry. On Ravelry. All right, so, holding my yarn. Whoo, and then I'm gonna pick up stitches. Can I get in closer? I don't know, can you? <laughs> ah, I so love working with you. All right, and we go up. I'm concerned about not blocking your view. Oh, sorry. With, a, with mm -hmm. our... Hang um, on, that was not the right... Recording there we go. device. There we go. So what I'm gonna do is pick up a few... What? Okay, so if this was the real thing... Come on, Jasmine. There we go. Picking up through like 400 layers of knitting. Oh no, I'm gonna pick it up this way, sorry. All right, so this is actually how I work. So I'm gonna pick up one from the front and one from the facing to secure it so that it's tidy on the inside. Ah. Oh good, then, then we can, now we can watch it again. Good, so like that. I need you to move your hands less. I, I'm knitting. Okay, poke and poke and wrap. We are such good professionals at video. We're gonna get more people telling us that we should not quit our day jobs, which is totally okay too. All right. And here, one from the front. This is only so that I can secure this little, the hem, the turned hem. Can, so, you, can you show it from the Let me show you on the other please? side. Yes. The side I have not sewn down yet. See how this is open? Right there, it's got a little open spot. 
when I'm picking up the stitches for the bottom of the button band. It's not a button band. It's just a, like a facing? A, a facing to attach the zipper to, which is beautiful. So I'm going to show you. This is the zipper. Oh, yeah. Of course, predictably. So because the zipper needs something to attach it to, I'm, I, I'm going to knit like two or three rows and then bind off and then the cut edge will fold over and it'll be attached to the knitting I'm going to do, theoretically, you know, when I get there, but probably tomorrow because Genevieve will want this if she knows it's closer. So that's what that's going to look like. But I want this secured down just because it feels like it'll be tidier that way. And if I'm picking up stitches and knitting a facing anyway, might as well do a nice job, right? Kind of my favorite thing. All right, so I'm going to pick up one more stitch. And I think that's it. If anyone has any questions, now is the time because I'm about to sign off and go take care of the kids. Anybody have any more questions? Going once. Let's let's wait a minute. They might be ruminating. Thank you guys for joining us for our face first Facebook Live video. I can't promise we'll be doing many of these, but we will definitely do at least this one. Guaranteed. <laughs> Excellent. All right. Did you learn anything today, Mom? You've sewn a million steaks. I don't think I taught you anything. Uh, I've learned something. Okay. All righty. So. <sighs> that's it. I'm going to go to bed. We're going to get my kids ready for bed. We'll talk to you next week. If you have any more questions, send them to us. Ravelry is a good place. Ravelry is a good place. You can put it in the episode thread for this week. Um, or PM us directly. Yeah, or that. Or me, specifically, because mom reads hers, but then doesn't tell me. Yeah. So we will see you soon. Thank you for joining us. Have a great evening. Bye.